Today, 5% of the British population, 3.4 million, follow Islam, and many neighbourhoods and cities are becoming majority Muslim. It's important to look at what their holy book, the Quran, teaches them about how they should live their lives and what they should believe about non-Muslims. And what better way to do that than read the Quran? Seriously, read it. It's very cheap. The Quran is universally believed by Muslims to be the perfect, infallible word of God. Starting in 610 AD, an Arabian man from Mecca called Muhammad claims the archangel Gabriel supposedly told him divine revelations from God, or Allah. These were written at the time on scraps of paper, and after Muhammad died, it took a full 20 years for these chapters, or surah, to be compiled into the Quran. Quite apart from the fact that there is scant evidence for a god, we have only Muhammad's word these incredible revelations are true. The Quran was originally written in classical Arabic, but one does not need to understand that dead language to criticise the Quran, one just needs to be literate. Many eminent scholars have dedicated their life to translating the Quran, and it would be a disservice to say one cannot even understand its rough meaning from their translations. This is especially true when the Quran says the same thing over and over and over again, which is that non-Muslim unbelievers are wicked and so will burn in hell for eternity. The following compilation of a colossal 167 verses inciting hatred against infidels intends to prove beyond debate that the Quran is full of nothing but malice towards non-believers from start till finish. Let's begin. Ignominious punishment awaits the unbelievers. Believers do not say Raina, but say Unzurna. Take heed, woeful punishment awaits the unbelievers. You will please neither the Jews nor the Christians unless you follow their faith. Say, God's guidance is the only guidance. And if, after all the knowledge you have been given, you yield to their whims, there shall be none to help you or protect you from God's ire. Lord, said Abraham, make this a secure land and bestow plenty upon its people, those of them that believe in God in the last day. As for those that do not, he answered, I shall let them live a while and then shall drag them to the scourge of the fire, a wretched fate. But the infidels who die unbelievers shall incur the curse of God, the angels and people all. And yet there are some who worship idols, bestowing upon them the adoration due to God, though the love of God is stronger in the faithful. But when they face their punishment, the wrongdoers will learn that might is God alone and God is stern in retribution. Those that suppress any part of the book which God has revealed in order to gain some paltry end shall swallow nothing but fire into their bellies. On the day of resurrection, God will neither speak to them nor purify them. Woeful punishment awaits them. Ask the Israelites how many conspicuous signs we gave them. He that tampers with the gift of God after it had been bestowed on him, shall find that God is stern in retribution. God is the patron of the faithful. He leads them from darkness to the light. As for the unbelievers, their patrons are false gods, who lead them from the light to the darkness. They are the inmates of the fire, wherein shall they abide forever. The fire 
means hell in every case that it is referred to. He that has received an admonition from his Lord and mended his ways may keep his previous gains. God will be his judge. Those that turn back shall be the inmates of the fire, wherein shall they abide forever. Fear the day when you shall all return to God, and then every soul shall be paid back for what it did. None shall be wronged. Those that deny God's revelations shall be sternly punished. God is mighty and capable of revenge. Nothing in earth or in heaven is hidden from God. As for the unbelievers, neither their riches nor their children will in the least save them from God's judgment. They will surely be the fuel of the fire. Like Pharaoh's people and those before them, they denied our revelations and God smote them in their sins. God is stern in retribution. Those to whom the book was given dissented through insolence only after knowledge had been vouchsafed them. He that denies God's revelations should know that swift is God's reckoning. Let not unbelievers take infidels as their friends in preference to the faithful. He that does this has nothing to hope from, from God. I shall meet out grievous punishment in this world and in the world to come. There shall be none to help them to the unbelievers. How will God guide people who lapsed into unbelief after embracing the faith and acknowledging the apostle as true and after receiving veritable proofs? And God does not guide the wrongdoers. Their reward will be the curse of God. The angels and mankind all, under it they shall abide forever. Their punishment shall not be mitigated. As for those that recant and die unbelievers, no ransom shall be accepted from any of them. Be it as much gold as would fill the earth entire. Woeful punishment awaits them and none shall help them. Do not follow the example of those who became divided and opposed to each other after veritable proofs have been given them. Grievous punishment awaits them on the day when some faces will be bright with joy and others blackened. As for the unbelievers, neither their riches nor their children shall in the least protect them from the scourge of God. They are the inmates of the fire, wherein shall they abide forever. The wealth they spend in this world can be compared to a freezing wind that smites the tillage of people who have wronged themselves, laying it waste. God is not unjust to them, they are unjust to their own souls. Believers, do not make friends with any but your own people. They will spare no pains to corrupt you. They desire nothing but your ruin. Their hatred is evident from what they utter with their mouths but greater is the hatred which their bosoms conceal. You believers, if you yield to the infidel, they will drag you back to unbelief and you will return headlong to perdition. But God is your protector and he is the best of helpers. We will cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers because they serve other deities beside God for whom he has revealed no sanction. The fire shall be their dwelling, and evil is the wrongdoer's dwelling. Can the man who seeks to please God be compared to him who has incurred God's anger? Hell shall be his home, evil his fate. It is Satan that causes his followers to be feared, but have no fear of them, and fear me, if you are true believers. Do not grieve for those that rush back headlong to disbelief. In no way will they harm God. God intends to give them no share in the hereafter, and grievous punishment awaits them. Those that barter their faith for unbelief will in no way harm God. 
woeful punishment awaits them. Let not the unbelievers think we prolong their days for their own good. We give them respite only that they may commit more grievous sins. Shameful punishment awaits them. He that obeys God and his apostle shall be admitted by him into gardens watered by running brooks, wherein shall they abide forever. That is the supreme triumph. But he that defies God and his apostle and transgresses his bounds shall be cast into a fire, wherein shall he abide forever. Shameful punishment awaits him. God pardons those who commit evil and ignorance and then quickly turn to him in penitence. These God will pardon. God is all-knowing and wise, but he will not pardon those who do evil. And when death comes to any of them, he says, Now I repent, nor those who die unbelievers. For them we have prepared a woeful scourge. Serve God and associate none with him. Show kindness to parents and kin to near and distant travellers, neighbours, to those that keep company with you, to the traveller in need, and to the slaves you own. God does not love the arrogant and the boastful, who are themselves niggardly, and enjoin people to be niggardly, who conceal that which God of his bounty has given them. Close brackets. We have prepared a shameful punishment for the unbelievers. God will not forgive those who serve other deities besides him, but he will forgive those whom he will for other sins. He that serves other deities besides God is guilty of a heinous sin. Or do they envy others what God has of his bounty given them? We gave Abraham's descendant the book and wisdom and an illustrious kingdom. Some among them believe in him and some reject him. Sufficient scourge is the fire of hell. Those that deny our revelations we will burn in fire. No sooner will their skins be consumed than we will give them other skins, so that they may taste the torment. Let those who would exchange the life of this world for the hereafter fight for the cause of God. Whoever fights for the cause of God, whether he be slain, or he triumph, on him we shall bestow a rich recompense. Dot, dot, dot. The true believers fight for the cause of God, but the infidels fight for the devil. Fight then the friends of Satan. Satan's cunning is weak indeed. Here he explains how Muslims are to conduct themselves when fighting the unbelievers. This is mainly applicable to the 7th century. But it is no offence for you to lay aside your arms when overtaken by heavy rain or stricken with an illness, although you must always be on your guard. God has prepared a shameful punishment for the unbelievers. He that defies the apostle after guidance had been revealed to him and follows a path other than that of the faithful, shall be given by us what he has chosen. We will burn him in the fire. A wretched fate. Those who accept the faith and then renounce it, who again embrace it and again deny it and grow in unbelief, God will neither forgive them nor rightly guide them. Give warning to the hypocrites that woeful punishment awaits them. Those who choose the unbelievers rather than the faithful for their friends, those that deny God and his apostles, and those that discriminate between God and his apostles, saying, we believe in some, but deny others. Thus seeking a middle way, these truly are the unbelievers, and for the unbelievers we have prepared a shameful punishment. Those that disbelieve and debar others from the God, path of God have strayed far into error. God will not forgive those who disbelieve and act unjustly. 
nor will he guide them to any path other than the path of hell, wherein shall they abide forever. Surely that is easy enough for God. As for those that believe and do good works, God will bestow their rewards on him and enrich them from his own abundance. But those who are scornful and proud, he will sternly punish, and they will find none besides God to protect or succor them. Scornful of God's message. As for the unbelievers, if they offered all that the earth contains, and as much besides, to redeem themselves from the torment of the day of de- resurrection, it shall not be accepted from them. Woeful punishment awaits them. They will strive to get out of the fire, but get out of it they shall not. Lasting torment awaits them. You cannot help a man if God intends to try him. Those whose hearts God does not intend to purify shall be held up to shame in this world, and in the world to come, grievous punishment awaits him. They avidly listen to lies and avidly devour the unlawful. If they come to you, give them your judgment or avoid them. Believers, take neither the Jews nor the Christians for your friends. They are friends to each other. Whoever of you seeks their friendship shall become one of their number. God does not guide the wrongdoing people. They do blaspheme that say, God is one of three. There is but one God. If they do not desist from saying so, those of them that disbelieve shall be smitten by grievous torment. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But those that disbelieve and deny our revelations shall become the inmates of hell. Those to whom we have given the book know him as they know their own children, but those who have forfeited their souls will never have faith. And who is more wicked than the man who invents a falsehood about God or denies his revelations? The wrongdoers shall never succeed. He will say, the fire shall be your home, therein to abide forever, unless God ordain otherwise. Surely your Lord is wise and all-knowing. Thus do we give the wrongdoers sway over each other as a punishment for their misdeeds. For those who have denied and scorned our revelations, the gates of heaven shall not be opened, nor shall they enter paradise until the camel shall pass through the eye of a sewing needle. Thus shall we reward the transgressors. Hell shall be their couch, and sheets of fire shall cover them. Thus shall we requite the wrongdoers. Remember when God revealed his will to the angels? I am with you, so give courage to the believers. I shall cast terror into the hearts of the infidels. Strike off their heads. Strike off the very tips of their fingers. That was because God, they defied God and his apostle. And he that defies God and his apostle shall be sternly punished by God. That is it. Taste it. The scourge of of the fire awaits the unbelievers. The unbelievers expend their riches in debarring others from the path of God. Thus do they dissipate their wealth, but they shall rue it, and in the end be overthrown. The unbelievers shall into hell be driven. God will separate the wicked from the just. He will heap the wicked one upon the other and then cast them into hell. These will surely be lost.
the hypocrites and those whose hearts were tainted said, Their religion has deceived them, but he that puts his trust in God shall find that God is mighty and wise. If you could see the angels when they carry off the souls of the unbelievers, they shall strike them on the faces and their backs, saying, Taste the torment of the conflagration. This is the punishment for what your hands committed. God is never unjust to his servants. Proclaim a woeful punishment to the unbelievers, except to those idolaters who have honoured their treaties with you in every detail and aided none against you. It ill becomes the idolaters to visit the mosques of God, for they are unbelievers, self-confessed. Vain shall be their works, and in the fire shall they abide forever. Believers, do not befriend your fathers or your brother if they choose unbelief in preference to faith. Wrongdoers are those of you that befriend them. Some among them say, give us leave to stay behind and do not expose us to temptation. Surely they have already succumbed to temptation. Hell shall engulf the unbelievers. And there are those among you, them who speak, speak ill of the prophet, saying, he has an ear for everything. Say, he has an ear only for what is good for you. He believes in God and puts his trust in the faithful. He is a blessing to the true believers among you. Those that speak ill of God's apostle have woeful punishment in store for them. They swear by God that they said nothing, yet they uttered the word of blasphemy and renounced Islam after embracing it. They sought to do what they could not attain, yet they had no reason to be spiteful, except perhaps God and his apostle had enriched them for his bounty. If they repent, it will indeed be better for them. But if they pay no heed, God will torment them grievously in this world and in the world to come. They shall have none on earth to protect or succor them. As for those that taunt the believers who give freely and deride those who give according to their means, God will deride them. Woeful punishment awaits them. It will be interesting to see how many times the word punishment and fear comes up in the Quran. As for the unbelievers, scolding water shall they drink, and for their unbelief, woeful punishment awaits them. Those who entertain no hope of meeting us, so God, being pleased and contented with the life of this world, and those who will pay no heed to our revelations, shall have the fire as their abode in requital for their deeds. Say, those that invent falsehood about God shall not succeed. They may take their ease in this life, but to us they shall then return, and for their unbelief we will make them taste a grievous torment. We shall defer it only for a time decreed. When that day has come, no shall self speak but by his leave. Some shall be damned and some shall be blessed. The damned shall be cast into the fire where groaning and wailing they shall abide as long as the heavens and earth endure unless your Lord ordain otherwise. Put no trust in the wrongdoers lest the fire should touch you and none but God can protect or help you. If any could make you marvel, then you should surely marvel at those who say, When we are dust, shall we be restored in a new creation? Such are those who deny their Lord, 
their necks shall be bound with chains. Those are the tenants of the fire, wherein shall they abide forever. Woe betide the unbelievers, for they shall be grievously punished. Those who love the life of this world more than the life to come, who debar others from the path of God and seek to make it crooked, they have strayed far into error. But the Lord revealed his will to them. We shall surely destroy the wrongdoers and surely give the land to you who dwell in them. Let him take heed who dreads my eminence and fears my threats. And they called for help, and every hardened sinner came to grief. Hell will stretch behind him, and putrid water shall he drink. He will sip, but scarcely swallow. Death will assail him from every side, yet he shall not be dead. Harrowing torment awaits him. The works of unbelievers are like ashes, which the wind scatters on a stormy day, they shall gain nothing from what they earn. That is surely the way to egregious error. Grievous torment awaits the wrongdoers, and those that believe and do good works shall be admitted into gardens watered by running brooks, wherein by their Lord's leave shall they abide forever. Their greeting shall be peace. Have you not thought of those who repay the grace of God with unbelief and drive their people into the house of perdition, in hell shall they burn and evil shall be their fate. They set up equals to God to leave people away from his path. Say to them, take your pleasure now, you are surely destined for the fire. On the day when the earth is changed into a different earth, and the heavens into new heavens. Mankind shall stand before God, the one who conquers all. On that day you shall see the guilty bound with chains, their garments pitch, and their faces covered with flames. By the Lord, we have sent forth before you to other communities, but Satan made their deeds seem fair to them, and to this day he is their patron. Woeful punishment awaits them. Surely this Quran gives guidance to that which is most upright. It promises the faithful who do good works a rich recompense, and for those who deny the life to come, we have prepared a woeful scourge. Yet man prays for evil as fervently as he prays for good. Those whom God guides are rightly guided, and those whom he confounds shall find no guardians beside him. We shall herd them all on the day of resurrection, prostrate upon their faces, blind, dumb, and deaf. Hell shall be their refuge. Whenever its flames die down, we will rekindle them, into a greater conflagration. Thus shall they be rewarded, because they disbelieved our revelations and said, When we are turned to bones and dust, shall we be restored in a new creation? For the wrongdoers, we have prepared a fire, which will encompass them like the walls of a pavilion. When they cry out for help, they shall be showered with water as hot as molten brass, which will scald their faces evil the drink, and evil the resting place. And when we said to the angels, prostate yourself before Adam, all prostrated themselves except Satan, who was a jinni disobedient to his lord. Would you then serve him and his offspring as your masters, rather than myself, despite their enmity towards you? A sad substitute the wrongdoers have chosen. Essentially what he's saying is that the wrongdoers, the unbelievers, are following Lucifer, Satan, the devil, and the, instead of the believers who follow God. Who is more wicked than he, when reminded of his Lord's revelations, turns away from them and forgets what his own hands have done? 
Dulkornain, we said. You must either punish them or show them kindness. He replied, The wicked we shall surely punish. Then shall they return to their Lord, who will torment them with grievous torments. As for those that have faith and do good works, yada yada. Do the unbelievers think they can make my servants patrons beside me? We have prepared hell for the unbelievers to dwell in. And when the unbelievers see you, they only mock you. Is this the one who denies your gods, while against the remembrance of the merciful they also blaspheme? Impatience is the very stuff man is made of. I shall show you my signs. Do not ask me to hurry them on. And they say, when will this promise be fulfilled, if what you say be true? If only the unbelievers knew the day when they shall strive in vain to shield their faces and backs from the fire of hell. The day when none shall succour them. You and your idols shall be the fuel of hell. Therein shall you all go down. Were they true gods, they would not go there. But therein shall they abide forever. Some wrangle about God, though they have neither knowledge nor illuminating scripture. They turn away in scorn to lead others astray from God's path. They shall incur disgrace in this life, and on the day of resurrection, taste the torment of the conflagration. This is the reward of your handiwork. Here are two antagonists who contend about their Lord. Garments of fire have been prepared for the unbelievers. Scalding water shall be poured on their heads, melting their skins and that which is in their bellies. They shall be lashed with rods of iron. Whenever in their anguish they strive to escape from it, back shall they be dragged and taste you the torment of the conflagration. Those that accept the true faith and do good works shall be forgiven and richly provided for, and those that seek to confute our revelations shall be the tenants of hell. Those that believed and did good works shall enter the gardens of delight. But the unbelievers who have denied our revelations shall receive an ignominious punishment. Say, shall I tell you which is worse than that? The fire which God has promised to those who deny him, a wretched fate. Never think that the unbelievers are immune on the earth. The fire shall be their shelter, a wretched fate. Indeed, they deny the hour. For those who deny the hour, we have prepared a conflagration. From far away, they shall hear it raging and roaring. And when chained together, they are flung into some narrow space, they will fervently call for death. But they will be told, do not call today for one death, call for many deaths. On that day, the sky with all of its clouds shall be rent asunder and the angels sent down in their ranks. On that day, the merciful will truly reign supreme. A day of woe it shall be to the unbelievers. On that day, the wrongdoer will bite his hands and say, would that I had walked in the apostle's path. Oh, would that I had never chosen so and so for my companion. It was he that made me stray from the admonition after it had come to me. Satan is ever treacherous to man. Say, little cares, my lord, if you do not invoke him. Now that you have denied his revelation, his punishment is bound to overtake you. Thus do we put unbelief in the hearts of the guilty. They shall not believe in it until they see the woeful scourge, which shall suddenly smite them when they are heedless. 
and then they will say, shall we ever be reprieved? On that day we shall heard from each community a multitude of those who disbelieved our revelations. They shall be led in separate bands, and when they come, he will say, you denied my revelations, although you knew nothing about them. What was it you were doing? The judgment will smite them in their sins, and they shall be dumbfounded. Those that disbelieve God's revelations and deny that they will ever meet him shall despair of my mercy. Woeful punishment awaits them. They challenge you to hasten on the scourge, but hell will encompass the unbelievers when the scourge will assail them from above and from beneath their feet. And God will say, taste the rewards of your own deeds. On the day the hour strikes, mankind will divide. Those who have embraced the faith and done good works will rejoice in a fair garden. But those who have disbelieved and denied our revelations and the life to come shall be delivered up for punishment. When our revelations are recited to them, they turn their backs in scorn, as though they had never heard them, as though their ears were sealed. To these proclaim a woeful punishment. And when they were told, follow what God has revealed, they say, we will follow the faith our fathers practiced. Yes, even though Satan invites them to the torment of the conflagration. We suffer them to take their ease a while, and we will subject them to a grievous scourge. As for those that believe and do good works, they shall be lodged in the gardens of paradise in recompense for their labours. But those that do evil, the fire shall be their home. Whenever they wish to emerge from it, they shall be driven back and be told, taste the torment of the fire, which you persistently denied. We will surely make them taste the lighter torment of this world before the greater torment of the world to come. And he who is more wicked than he that pays no heed to the revelations of his Lord when he is reminded of him, we will surely take vengeance on the transgressors. Those who speak ill of God and his apostle shall be cursed by God in this life and in the life to come, and he has prepared for them a shameful punishment. God has laid his curse upon the unbelievers and prepared for them a conflagration. God will surely punish the hypocrites and the idolaters, both men and women. But to believing men and to believing women, he will turn in mercy. God is ever forgiving and compassionate. Compassionate by 7th century standards. But those who strive to confute our revelations shall suffer the torment of a harrowing scourge. By no means the others will rejoin. You have plotted night and day, bidding us disbelieve in God and set up rivals to him, and they will repent in secret when they see the scourge. We will put chains round the necks of the unbelievers. Shall they not be rewarded according to their deeds? On that day, you shall be powerless to help or harm one another. To the wrongdoers, we shall say, taste the torment of the fire, which you persistently denied. You people, the promise of God is true. Let not life of this world ever deceive you, nor let the dissembler ever deceive you about God. Satan is your foe, therefore treat him as a foe. He tempts his followers, that they may become the heirs of the conflagration. The unbelievers shall have grievous torment. As for the unbelievers, 
the fire of hell awaits them. Death shall not deliver them, and its torment shall never be eased for them. Thus shall we requite the thankless. Keep yourselves apart, you sinners, this day. Children of Adam, did I not charge you never to worship Satan, your veritable foe, but to worship me? That is a straight path. Yet has he led from among you many a generation astray? Had you no sense? This is the hell you have been promised. Burn therein this day on account of your unbeliefs. Disbelief. But we shall say, herd up the sinners, their spouses, and the deities they worshipped besides God, and lead them to the path of hell. Surely he has brought the truth, confirming those who were sent before. You shall all taste the grievous torments. You shall be requited only according to your deeds. Is this not a better welcome than the Zakum tree? We have made this tree a scourge for the unjust. It grows in the nethermost part of hell, bearing fruit like demons' heads. On it they shall feed, and with it they shall cram their bellies, together with draughts of scalding water. Then to hell surely they shall return. Do they wish to hurry on our scourge? Evil shall be that morning when it smites them in their courtyards, forewarned though they have been. Because they forget the day of reckoning, those that stray from God's path shall be grievously punished. But doleful shall be the return of the transgressors. In hell shall they burn, an evil resting place. Therein let them taste their drink, scalding water, festering blood, coupled with other putrid things. Say, enjoy your unbelief a while, but you shall be among the tenants of the fire. Can he who passes the night in adoration, standing or or on his knees, who bewares the life to come and hopes to earn the mercy of his life? That will surely be the ultimate loss. Above them there shall be sheets of fire, and sheets of fire shall be beneath them. By this God puts fear into his servants' hearts. Fear me! So who is more wicked than he who invents a falsehood about God and denies the truth when it is declared to him? Is there not a home in hell for the unbelievers? Yes, indeed, my revelations did come to you, but you denied them. You were arrogant and a blasphemer. And on the day of resurrection, you shall see their faces blackened. Those who uttered falsehoods about God. Is there not in hell a resting place for the arrogant? And in throngs the unbelievers shall be led to hell. When they draw near, its gates will be opened, and its keepers will say to them, Did there not come to you apostles of your own, who proclaimed to you the revelations of your Lord and forewarned you of this day? Yes, they will say, and thus the promised scourge will smite the unbelievers. Thus shall your Lord's judgment be passed on the unbelievers. They are assuredly the inmates of the fire. Our return shall be to God. The transgressors shall be the inmates of the fire. Do you not see how those who dispute God's revelations are turned away from the right path? Those who have denied the book and the message we sent through our apostles will learn hereafter, when with shackles and chains around their necks they shall be dragged through scalding waters and then burnt in the fire. Forewarn them of the day 
when God's enemies will be herded into the fire, so that when they are sorted out, their ears, their eyes, and their very skins will testify to what they did. We will surely make the unbelievers taste grievous torment, and pay them back for the worst of their misdeeds. Thus shall God's enemies be recompensed. The fire shall forever be their home, because they have denied our revelations. We shall tell the unbelievers what they did, and we will surely visit upon them a grievous scourge. Have they idols which in the practice of their faith have made lawful to them what God has not allowed? Had the decisive word not been pronounced already, judgment would surely have been passed among them. Woeful punishment awaits the wrongdoers. And you shall see the wrongdoers when they behold the scourge. Say, is there no way back? And you shall see them ranged before it, awed and humiliated. They shall look with furtive glances. And the true believers will say, the lost are those who lost their souls and all their kin on the day of resurrection. The wrongdoers shall surely suffer everlasting torment. Yet the factions disagreed among themselves. But woe betide the wrongdoers, for they shall suffer the anguish of a woeful day. But the transgressors shall endure forever the torment of hell, which for them shall not be assuaged. They shall be speechless with despair. The zakum tree shall provide the sinner's food. Like dregs of oil, like scalding water, it shall simmer in his belly. Seize him and drag him into the depths of hell. Then pour out the scourge of scalding water over his head. Taste this. Such are God's revelations. We recite them to you in all truth. But in what words will they believe, if not in God himself and all his signs? Woe betide every untruthful sinner. He hears God's revelations recited to them, and then, as though he had never heard them, persists in scorn, forewarn him of a woeful scourge, and if he knew a little of our signs, he would deride them. Such men shall suffer degrading torment. Hell is at their rear. The, their gains shall not avail them, nor shall the masters they have served besides God. Grievous punishment awaits them. This is true guidance. Those that deny their Lord's revelations shall suffer the anguish of a woeful scourge. As for the unbelievers, were my revelations not declared to you? Did you not scorn them and commit evil? When you were told God's promise is true, the hour is sure to come, you said, we know nothing of the hour. It is a vain conjecture, nor are we convinced. The evil of their deeds will manifest itself to them, and the scourge at which they scoffed will encompass them. They will be told, We will this day forget you, as you yourself forgot you would meet this day. The fire shall be your shelter, and none will help you. That is because you scoffed at God's revelations and were seduced by your earthly life. The day the unbelievers are exposed before the fire, we shall say to them, you squandered away your precious gifts in your earthly life and took your fill of pleasure from them. Today, your recompense will be degrading torment because you acted with arrogance and injustice in the land and committed evil. The day the unbelievers are arrayed before the fire, they shall be asked, Is this not real? Yes, by the Lord, they will say. Then taste the torment, he will say, for you did not believe. Have they never journeyed through the land and seen what was the fate of those who have gone before them? God destroyed them utterly and a similar fate awaits the unbelievers because God is the protector of the faithful and because the unbelievers have no protector. Are they to be compared to those who shall abide in hell forever 
and drink scalding water that will tear their bowels to peace. Note the use throughout the Quran of a very crude carrot and stick, a garden for the believers and torture and fire for all eternity for the unbelievers. And that he may punish the hypocrites and the idolaters, men and women, who think I evil thoughts about God. A turn of evil shall befall them, for God is angry with them. He has laid on them his curse and made hell ready for them. A wretched fate. As for those that disbelieve in God and his apostle, for the unbelievers we have prepared a conflagration. It is God who has sovereignty over the heavens and the earth. He pardons whom he will and punishes whom he pleases. And God is ever forgiving and compassionate. Cast you too into hell, every hardened unbeliever, every opponent of good, every doubting transgressor who has set up another deity besides God. Hurl him, you too, into the harrowing scourge. Perish the liars who dwell in darkness and are heedless of the life to come. When would the day of judgment be, they ask. On that day they will, shall be scourged in the fire. Taste this, the punishment you sought to hasten. Woe betide on that day the unbelievers who now divert themselves with profane talk. On that day they shall be hurled into the fire of hell. This is the fire which you denied. And besides this, a scourge awaits the wrongdoers, though most of them do not know it. The hour is their time appointed, and more calamitous and more doleful shall be the hour. Yet the wrongdoers persist in error and madness. On the day they are dragged into the fire with faces down, feel the touch of hell. The transgressors will be known by their looks. They shall be seized by their forelocks and their feet. So which of your Lord's blessings would you deny? That is the hell the transgressors deny. They shall wander between fire and water, fiercely seething. They shall dwell amidst scorching winds and seething water, in the shade of pitch-black smoke, neither cool nor refreshing. But if he is an erring disbeliever, his welcome shall be a downpour of scalding water an incineration in a hell. Yes, they will reply, but you tempted yourself, you bided your time, you doubted, and were seduced by vain desires until God's will was done, and the dissembler misled you about God. Today no ransom shall be accepted from you, nor from the unbelievers. The fire shall be your refuge. Justly have you earned it. A wretched end. But those that disbelieve our revelations and deny them are the heirs of hell. Woeful punishment awaits the unbelievers. Those that oppose God and his apostle shall be brought low, as have those before them. We have sent down distinct revelations. Shameful punishment awaits the unbelievers. Have you not heard of those who disbelieved before you? They taste the baleful consequences of their unbelief, and grievous punishment is yet in store for them. But those that disbelieve and deny our revelations shall be the inmates of the fire, wherein shall they abide forever. A wretched fate. Prophet, Make war on the unbelievers and the hypocrites, and deal sternly with them. Hell shall be their home, evil their fate.
For these, we have prepared the torment of the conflagration, and for those who deny their Lord, the scourge of hell. But we disbelieved and said, God has revealed nothing. You are but in grievous error. And they will say, if only we had listened and understood, we should not now be among the inmates of the conflagration. Say, consider whether God destroys me and all my followers, or has mercy upon us. Who will protect the unbelievers from a woeful scourge? Lay hold of him and bind him, then burn him in the fire of hell, and then fasten him with a chain seventy cubits long. For he did not believe in God, the most great, nor did he care to feed the destitute. Today he shall be friendless here, only filth shall be his food, the filth which only sinners eat. Some among us are Muslims, and some among us are wrongdoers. Those that embrace Islam pursue the right path, but those that do wrong shall become the fuel of hell. My mission is only to communicate God's messages. Those that disobey God and his apostle shall forever abide in the fire of hell. If you persist in unbelief, how will you escape the day that will make children grey-haired, the day when the sky will split asunder? God's promise shall surely be fulfilled. By no means, because he has stubbornly denied our revelations, I will lay on him a mounting torment. Those on the right hand will in gardens ask the sinners, what has brought you into hell? They will say, We were never tired of, we were never of those who prayed, nor did we ever feed the destitute. We engaged in vain discourse with those who engaged it and denied the day of reckoning till the inevitable claimed us. Why then do they turn away from this reminder like frightened asses fleeing from a lion? For the unbelievers, we have prepared chains and fetters and a conflagration. And the righteous will get virgins, green cushions and various other fine robes. He admits into his mercy whom he will. And for the wrongdoers, he has prepared a woeful punishment. Would that you knew what the day of judgment is. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. Did we not obliterate the early generations and cause the latter ones to follow them? Thus shall we deal with the transgressors. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. Did we not create you from a humble fluid which we kept in a safe receptacle for an appointed term? All this we did. How excellent is our work. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. Have we not made the earth an abode for the living and for the dead? Have we not placed lofty mountains upon it and given you fresh water for your drink? On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. Begone to that which you deny. Depart into the shadow that will rise into three columns, giving neither shade nor shelter from the flames and throwing up sparks as huge as towers, as bright as yellow camels. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. On that day they shall not speak, nor shall their pleas be heard. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. Such is the day of judgment. We will herd you all, together with past generations. If then you are cunning, try your spite against me. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. The righteous shall dwell amidst cool shades and fountains, and feed on such fruits as they desire. Eat and drink, and may every joy attend you. This is the guerdon of your labours. Thus shall we recompense the righteous. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. Eat and enjoy yourself a while. Surely you are sinners all. On that day, 
Woe betide the disbelievers. If they are bidden to kneel down, they do not kneel. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers. In what revelation after this will they believe? So, clearly, even without all the other verses which incite hatred against unbelievers, even if all those other verses didn't exist, this single surah is enough to prove conclusively that the Quran holds unbelievers in utter contempt. Hell will lie in ambush, a home for the transgressors. Therein shall they abide long ages. Therein shall they taste neither refreshment nor any drink, save scalding water and decaying filth, a fitting recompense. But when the supreme calamity strikes, the day when man will call to mind his labours, when hell appears to those with eyes to see, he that transgressed and chose this present life shall have his home in hell, and he that feared to stand before his Lord and curbed his soul's desire shall have his home in paradise. On that day there shall be faces covered with dust, veiled with darkness. These shall be the faces of degenerate blasphemers. On that day, woe betide the disbelievers who deny the last judgment. None denies it except the sinful transgressor, who when our revelations are recited to him, says, Fables of the ancients. He that fears God will pay heed, but the wretched sinner will flout it. He shall burn in the gigantic fire, wherein shall he then neither live nor die. As for those that turn their backs and disbelieve, God will torment them with the supreme torment. To us shall they return, and then we will ourselves bring them to account. I warn you then of a blazing fire, in which none shall burn save the hardened sinner who disbelieves and turns away. The unbelievers among the people of the book and the pagans shall in the fire of hell abide forever. They are the vilest of all creatures. And that concludes the Quran. In conclusion, these verses overwhelmingly demonstrate that the Quran incites hatred, contempt and loathing against non-Muslims. This is deeply concerning, not just for Britain, but for any nation with a significant population of fundamentalist Muslims. There is no denying that there are praiseworthy parts of the Quran. For example, some verses urge Muslims to do good works, to give to the poor, and to not murder. But these are not unique to Islam and are accompanied by unacceptable incitements to despise unbelievers. These incitements seem to be much more numerous than in the Old and New Testaments, which indicate that Islam is a more intolerant religion than Judaism or Christianity. The relentlessness of these incitements undoubtedly contributes to terrorism in the West, since for fundamentalists, it's not so great a step from despising infidels to thinking they aren't worthy of life. As just seen, these innumerable incitements have three key themes. Unbelievers are wicked as they do not believe in God and Muhammad's revelations. Unbelievers will be tortured in hell the fire, till the end of time for that sin. Unbelievers are untrustworthy and should not be Muslims' friends, slash, they're controlled by Satan. Islam's intolerance can be persuasively argued to be causing serious problems in society, which damage its cohesion. There are three concrete suggestions to limit this damage. Firstly, the government should invest much more money in teaching English to immigrants. Second, the government should stop funding so-called faith schools 
and instead let children decide for themselves what religion, if any, to follow. And finally, it should significantly limit immigration from those countries with a high percentage of fundamentalist Muslims. If a nation is to move forward and prosper in the global 21st century, it must foster sympathy, understanding and cooperation towards and with those of differing opinions. To do that, its people must stop believing in the perfect truth of religious scripture.